Hi everyone, Cindy Squirrel here from Squirrel Mouse Farms and Squirrel Mouse Farms Guest Cabins. It's minus five today, but it's supposed to warm up. We have some guests here staying at the cabins. We have all three booked, uh, solid until the end of the month. But next week, it's supposed to turn warm. Well, next weekend, I guess. This weekend coming up, plus 10. But we've had mild spells before. It just depends on if it freezes at night, if we get any snow, and how good of a base the uh, polar bear riders made on the snowmobile trails. But uh, let's do a walk around. So there's still a fair bit of snow. And we got this beauty ice all over the place. So look at that truck <laughs> sitting on a sheet of ice. One of our guest vehicle. Yeah, we had a mild spell and it there was a lot of melting going on and a lot of ice. And yeah. Well, my husband he found some sand and we put sand out for a guest. Uh, don't want anybody falling. But they went up to the Abitibi Canyon yesterday. Uh, they were going all day. And they said that instead of going on this side, on the east side and going west to Smooth Rock, they went to Smooth Rock, filled up with gas in Smooth Rock, went to the Abitibi Canyon, and it only cost them about $30 worth of uh, fuel. And then their tanks were full enough to come down the east side and come back. And it was quite a bit cheaper doing it that way because fuel is expensive up there. But at good reason, it's in the middle of nowhere. And uh, they've been enjoying every night coming in here. And uh, looks like they've been having fun in here. Maybe a little bit of beer has been drank. And maybe a little bit of wine. But they've been enjoying the fire and just staying out here. Oh, looks like maybe more than one bottle of wine. Not darn nice though. Put sand here. Just, just to be safe. I'm just glad that because of COVID shutting us down for January and February that at least there's a March up here and uh, sometimes we're open till April 12th the trails of course last year we had to close down early because of COVID too just checking out behind the barn Go for a walk There's just not that much snow. Those fence posts out there. They're all showing. And I should only see about the top four inches of them. Strange winter. Well, sometimes I come out here and there's a fox or can see some kind of wildlife but of course not today because I have a camera well, that's our property back of the property I used to love coming out here and seeing the cows but we got rid of the cows two summers ago. We, first, we thought we'd just downsize and we got rid of 65 head. And uh, we only kept a dozen. And it was just as much work really to have the 65 head as it was to have a dozen. I still had to be home all the time. Still had to cut hay. You know, you still had to bring it in and that. And Bob's still worried about me getting hurt with the bull or the cows. <laughs> me, I was never afraid of the bull. I was always more afraid of the cows. But, uh, after 
watching him being attacked by a bull, one of our younger bulls. Yeah, I just, it scared me. But that's the back of the cabins and the house. Beauty day. Like I said, it's, it's cold, but the sun is sure bright and warm. I don't know if you can see that, but the sun is so warm that it's melting the snow on the top of the Quonset. You can see it running down. Spring's a coming. The barn on the property used to be 300 feet long. That used to be barn all the way to that end. But there was a silo that was right here. And the high wind came one day and took the top 40 feet off the silo and dropped it right on the barn. So my husband, he had an excavator at the time and he cut the barn, the, the damage piece out. And so now it's two barns, <laughs> which is perfect. You could put cattle in that and if you had pigs or chickens, you could have pigs in the barn. In this barn maybe a horse or two and up top you could put chickens or something we've been waiting two years now for the scrap guy to come and pick up our scrap pile which is good that he didn't come because now scrap pile price is high and that's our driving shed that we used to put all our equipment in now we just put the vehicles in there and the side by side and of course, our tractor broke down and developed a fuel leak. And so we had to, uh, <laughs> there she goes. So we had to send it to Nidaliskard, which is two and a half hours away to get fixed because Bob couldn't get the regen and the muffler and all that off. So we had to get a neighbor, neighbor kid in. And he pushed the snow wall for us out of the way because of course we had a big snowstorm which always happens. The track, our tractor never ran for two weeks. We didn't have any snow. As soon as it's broke down and gone, then you get snow. This is the old house, the original house on the farm. We lived in it for three years, I guess, while we renovated the bungalow and put an addition on the bungalow there. and. Now Bob, he just uses that. He's got all his woodworking tools in there. So you don't get grease on wood and woodworking tools. So they're in a separate building for him. And he goes out there and starts the fire and makes stuff. So this is our driving shed. It's got the open front for the big white equipment in that. The hay bine and stuff like that. The baler. There's supposed to be a tractor in there, but there's no tractor in there. Hopefully get it back tomorrow. I won't like the bill. It's $1,200 just for floating expenses. But I don't know if it's too dark to see in here or not. I just got my truck in here. And Bob's mechanical shop. <laughs> 